This podcast is about interview and job search strategies that work. Interview and job strategies at work. You know, the moment you start looking for a job is when you already have one. Always be looking for another job. And as you never know um, when your company is going to lay you off or go out of business. That's really true, right? A lot of times, you never, just never know about your company. Anyway, um, the other thing is um, there's a, you know, a couple strategies to have that may benefit you is, um, you know, your email. Does your email have your name in it when you're applying for a job? Now, we're specifically talking about IT jobs in this in this blog, in this uh, podcast. Um, so in that regard, you know, create a, a blog, like a WordPress site or a blogger site, and then uh, have your resume on there and do a um, – and post an, an About Me page as well so that people get to know who you are. Like, who is this person? I want to give a good feeling about this person, right? Before they even – see who you are or when you're applying, okay, this is really cool. Um, the other thing is, you know, create a professional profile on Twitter or LinkedIn and Instagram if you don't already have one, of course. Just get, you know, it tells the employer, I have a social experience. I have a social uh, profile. I'm, I'm in the social media uh, market, if you will. I don't know what you call it, that or not, but I'm a social media person. Okay, awesome. Uh, the other thing is, you know, if you have a skill – you know, teach people about it. Get a YouTube channel, you know, in the IT field, like even if you're starting off, whatever you know, oh, it's plugging in a modem, whatever, you know, do, do stuff like that. Get, you know, get really excited about, um, you know, creating your own content for other people to view, you know. Uh, and then also I would say you, you create a money map. Basically, you, you have a map, United States, wherever you're at, right? And so you have the, the money map basically on a map you draw – I'm here, uh, wherever here is for you. And then if a job is, say, two hours away, well, how much would you need to get paid per hour to go to that job? So that's that's the money map. You know, that really will help you identify uh, how much you want to earn. And also, if you want to know, like, what you're worth or what the job is worth, you go to, like, salary.com or another resource like that and just look up, like, what is that? What does that job do? What do they pay? What's the median pay for that? You know, so you, you kind of have want to have an idea about that before you go in and just say, oh, I don't know. Just pay me whatever. Yeah, they will pay you whatever. <laughs> they will pay you the lowest possible amount. Believe that. Yeah. hundred percent on that one. Yeah. Anyway, so that that takes into consideration your time, your travel, uh, and then also to how it affects your family. So you have to take the kids to work. Uh, I'm sorry, you have to take the kids to school, ballet practice, piano practice, whatever. That'll affect uh, that that change as well. And, um, you know, make a, make an Excel spreadsheet out of it. Maybe you make a graph that says, you know, this is what I want to make. Uh, if I, I'm here and I, I work 30 minutes away, I want to make this much, or I can make this much, uh, or or relative to what you're making. For instance, like your current job is, is $14 an hour. Your commute time is say $2 an hour. Your new job that you're going to get, which is, you know, an hour away because it's one hour back and forth, that's $20 an hour. So your real dollar amount that you're really going to get is more like $18 an hour. So put a, put a dollar amount on that travel. You know, that, that's really key with that. You know, if you're traveling four hours for a job every day, uh, two hours one way, figure out if it's making you, you make fourteen dollars an hour, what would you need to make in order for that to be a realistic thing? Yeah, you want to really uh, talk about that and develop a strategy for that. you know The other thing is create like a uh, a list, like a tracking list that you're you're you I've applied at this many job boards, this many companies I put my resume on. so you can track who who have I sent my resume to, you know? Who and also put in there your target rate. I put in this. Uh, you've put in this. Uh, like for instance, dice. You've put in like say whatever your dollar amount is, you know, and make a chart of that and remember it because a lot of times uh, recruiters will go and say, okay, that's the rate you want to you make, and they'll reference like, okay, they're gonna sometimes base their target off of what you put in that dice.com or whatever indeed.com. What do you want to make per hour? Um, the other thing is create like a uh, 
a phone call, uh, an interview tracker list. You can even record calls. That's probably highly recommended. When you when you have a recruiter that's calling you or an, pretty much an interview, when you go over an interview, record that call. You know, and then go over and say, "What did I What did I do right? What did I do wrong with that?" You know, um, the the phone call uh, you'll identify who's calling you. You know, what uh, what is the location of the job they're calling about? What's the hourly rate they're going to pay? Um, what's the hourly rate you wanna you wanna um, pay? What you've told them basically. Also, um, it tells you like what what is the job requirements? What is my expectations? What certifications do I need? And also be keen on your tone of voice. What is your tone saying? Are you really high pitched? Are you talking really fast? Or are you like, okay, let's just calmly talk about this? I know I'm kind of hyper about that, but you know, uh, I, I'm not the person to be talking about tone. By the way, no way, no possible. Yeah, and uh, put probably put like a, I don't know, one through ten, let's say. And do you think you got the job? You know, do they? Do you think they'll pay you more money? Um, it's a, if it's a face-to-face -face interview, which is always recommended, what's their body language telling you? What are you reading? You know, how are you reading them? What are they, what are they saying? Are they always looking away? Um, you know, are they, I don't know, not responsive to your, your discussion? You never know. Uh, and then of course you listen to your voice on and made a talk about that. Um, you know, do you sound confident when you talk to them? you know, on the phone? Are you like, yeah, I'm really confident about my skills? And probably, you know, develop, it develops your, your elevator pitch a lot of times. Like, what am I, what's my core uh, job uh, skills? In one minute, okay, I'm, I, I'm good at this, you know, whatever that is. Okay, good. And you'll identify that because every time you go to an interview and you record yourself, it'll say, okay, I need to work on this. Or, oh, that's nice, and you write it down. You may just start writing down what is your uh, what are your skills, your intro, your your elevator pitch, basically. You know, um, find out how to remember their names. You know, if you have a mechanism, write it down on a piece of paper. You know, even when you go there, write it down on a piece of paper. Always have a piece of paper if you can, uh, ahead of time when you go for a face to face, and that says like job interview for this job whatever that job is. And you put down, if you know the people you're meeting, put down, I'm meeting these people. This is the time. And then put some questions you might have. Uh, do you offer 401k, for instance, right? Um, you know, do you have a work from home uh, policy? That's an awesome one to ask, you know? Just questions like that, you know, you need to know before you go. Because a lot of times, you know, if you're going from like, say, a McDonald's to an IT, that's one thing. But if you're going from a IT to an IT position, you know, you really want to make sure that the staff and the management, you're not walking into something really crazy. Because they may be walking in, they may be hiring you to fix their problems, you know, or they need somebody to blame. Either one. Yeah. Um, the other thing is add, add them to your LinkedIn account after and then email them. Thank you for the interview. Um, you know, follow up with them for the interview. It's really important to do that and always bug them. You always want to bug recruiters, you know, just bug them maybe three times. Probably if you don't hear back, cause you want to know immediately if they're considering you or not, you know, if you call them three times and they say, Hey, I don't know your, uh, I forget your name. <laughs> yeah. That's probably not a job for you. They probably don't remember you. They're probably hanging. Okay. Let's just, you know, cause they don't want to, Sometimes they don't want to tell you uh, bad news or whatever. You know, these are people, humans after all. So some of them are shy, believe it or not. They're not all IT recruiters are not IT typically. They're just, they were bartenders or they were, you know, salespeople in some fashion. You know, a lot of times you look at their LinkedIn profile, you'll see that, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so they're not IT. They don't, they don't speak IT, a lot of them. And what they do know is just based on experience. So, um, you know, make sure that the recruiter knows this is your hourly, or hourly amount and stick with that. You should really do your homework before doing that. So you want to have one hourly amount for this job, this title, and stick with it. Uh, that way you're not flipping and flopping around, you know, 
that know the range before you get in there. That's really key with this one. Um, you know, also, um, if you, if you call the recruiter, I hit this point, but if you call the recruiter on Thursday and you know, you have a great conversation and on Friday, they don't know who you are. That's time to move on to another recruiter, you know, or maybe go to a, um, go to the, if they are, if it's a client that they're representing, go to the client themselves directly. Um, try to find out as much information about the company as possible before you even go and, and, and apply. You know, you want to know, like, who are they? What do they do? Uh, again, if you're, if you're just looking for a job and you're McDonald's, you want to just IT call center, basically, don't worry about that. Just go and apply. They'll, they'll train you. You know, call centers will train you. There's two weeks usually. Um, you get cool training. And you just have to sit back and just, like, absorb it. You know, just absorb. Get a notebook. Write it down. Write down what they tell you to write down. And just absorb and wait patiently. After you get that first call center job, bam, start applying. <laughs> start applying for the next one. And those every interview you have, you're going to learn, like, what do I not know about this job? Every interview you go on, you learn, okay, I need to know this, this technology. You know, for instance, if you're going to call center and you go to help desk, well, I need to know Active Directory for help desk. You would know that by going to an interview. And then, okay, well, you learn Active Directory. You go to, like, Udemy, and you, what is Active Directory? And you Google it, and then you learn it. Okay, good, awesome. And then you download Microsoft Windows, free. Um, you install Active Directory, you know, YouTube, watch the videos, really cool. You learn Active Directory, you learn how to create users, groups, objects. Awesome. You're very cool now. Now you apply for the help desk job. So maybe you went from $10 an hour to say $12 an hour call center. Now you're up to $15 an hour help desk. Awesome. Look at that. And that was only a matter of a couple of months because nothing says you can't, you know, jump from a call center job to a help desk job in a month. You know, it, it's all about you, whatever you want to do. You don't owe these companies anything. Believe that, you know, I know. Oh yeah. I'm loyal to the company. I guess in some regard, you know, the IBMers of the world, yeah, that that's okay. Some relevance to that. And I don't knock that. That's their deal, right? I'm saying is if you want to get the most money uh, for in IT, you, you got to move up. You can't stay stagnant. I know people who are <laughs> worked help desk for like 10 years. <laughs> like, what are you doing, dude? Why are you still help desk? Well, I like it. I'm comfortable. And they're making like 15 bucks an hour. Hey, that's good for them. Awesome. That you know what that means? That means less competition for other other folks is what that means. Everybody else doesn't have to worry about that person taking their job because they're not a threat. They're just happy doing what they're doing. No big deal. That's what they want to do. No worries. The other thing I'll say for a job, you go and search for a job, and it says, okay, you have to have um, two-year degree associates or whatever. You have to have a CCNA, for instance, right? And you say, okay, well, I can either go to college for two years and spend about $9,000. I Googled the national average, about nine k for a uh, two-year degree, then spend about three months of training and about $250 to get your CCNA to get this job. Or you can bypass that whole associate's degree deal nonsense for that job and say, I'm just going to get a CCNA and save about $9,000. And then I'll just get a job at some other competitor of this company. You know? Um, yeah, I would definitely say that. Yeah. Don't, don't make the mistake of thinking that you need to pay money, uh, for an associate's degree for a job, uh, when you can just easily go get a job at their competitor with a certification. Always keep that in mind. What does a job say? Most, cause a lot of jobs say bachelor's degree, associate's degree. You know, if, you know, if you have the skills, if you have the knowledge, they're going to hire you, regardless of that degree. I've seen it how many times. Okay, so that wraps up my podcast for this first podcast, introduction podcast. I hope you've got some value out of it, and I thank you, thank you for listening.